There's no telling you're the right girl So I can only say that it feels right It feels right, it feels right Yeah, I can only say that it feels right It feels right, it feels right Yeah, I can only say that it feels right tutorial on this look right here obviously I always say the same thing in every single video I'm rushing because my husband is down in the car waiting for me right now I actually left with him to go home because I film at like my beauty space and in the car I was like oh, I forgot to film an intro ah! I like, turned the car around and rushed back here so I'm filming really quickly and we're both so hungry I need to go get dinner and he's waiting for me down in the car sorry John be right there but anyways this is my go-to makeup look for nights when I'm going out or even if it's a daytime I don't whenever I feel like having a really smoldering kind of fierce like sexy eye makeup look this has been my go-to look for months now and I've seen a ton of requests for it. you guys see me wearing this look on snapchat quite often sometimes I'll change it up and I'll do like all matte colors and I'll leave out the shimmer that I have on the lid and I'll just do like the outer crease but for the most part I always do with neutrals and browns and warmer colors I really love it I think it brings a lot of attention a lot of attention to the eyes and it definitely gives you that more like slanted eye look because of that cat eye that we are doing so yeah I hope that you guys enjoyed this video thank you so much for watching I love you and I'll see you soon bye First things first, I'm going to be priming my eyes. And the way I like to do this, everyone has their own way of priming their eyes. You can just go in with a good old eye primer if you want. But I like to use my Urban Decay Naked Concealer. I put it all over the lid, and then I blend it out with a brush. Today, I am using the Morphe E8 brush. You can use a beauty blender. I just don't like using my fingers because I feel like it's patchy, and I don't get as much coverage, and my eyeshadow doesn't look as good. And then I absolutely have to set it with powder. I'm using the MAC Pro Emphasize Powder, but a translucent powder would work, a face powder. Any sort of powder is going to make the eyeshadows go on more smooth and blend easier. So for the first shadow, I'm going to pick up one of my all-time favorites, which is Makeup Geek Creme Brulee. Literally, I think I've gone through six pans of this eyeshadow. Like, the dedication is beyond. I'm going to start off by applying this in the upper crease area, also known as the transition color. And I'm going to be using a long-haired natural brush to apply this. And the reason why is because I do not want this to be concentrated on any particular area. I want it to be very feathery and lightweight and airbrushed and seamless on the entire upper lid area. Then I'm going to go in with Anastasia Burnt Orange, and I'm going to continue to use that exact same brush. This is the Morphe M441, and I want to use this because I want everything to look so blended. I don't want anything to be packed on at this point. I don't want to use like a short, dense brush, and the reason I'm going so in-depth about brushes today is because I feel like so many people think that they can't do their makeup when really it's not them, it's not the product, but it's the brushes. If you understand your brushes, then you can understand makeup. You can understand how to apply makeup. Your tools are so important. So right now, I'm sticking with a long hair natural bristle. I'm going to now pick up Fawn, and this is again by Anastasia. This is a little bit darker and a little bit more neutral in shade, and with that exact same brush, I'm going to concentrate this just on the outer corner of the eye, and you can see I'm kind of swooping it and rounding it out to create the eye shape that I want my shadow to be. If you do not have a natural crease, that's the beauty of makeup. You can create one. Just stick with the technique, and it will come out just the same. Now I'm going to pick up Anastasia Fudge. I didn't realize this was such an Anastasia day. Hey, Fudge is one of my favorite dark browns ever. It's like the color of like warm chocolate. I love it. So now to apply this, I changed my brush. And now I'm using the M433 brush by Morphe, which looks very similar to the first one we used. It's just a little bit shorter and denser so it can pack on product. And now you see I'm using that because of the fact that I'm packing on this dark shade and I want it to be more concentrated. When I'm working with a dark color, I like to pack it on by doing pouncing motions. And then I go back and forth and I start blending it out. I never go in and just start blending immediately with a dark shade. Otherwise it can look patchy and kind of break up and have fallout. I like to pack things on going up and down in a pouncing motion and then blend it out once it's on the lid. Hopefully that makes sense. And then before moving on, I'm just going to make sure that we have no harsh lines on the upper crease and just go over it one more time with a little bit more of that burnt orange on my brush. Because honey, let's get real. I fear harsh lines like I fear the devil. Now for my lid color, I'm going to be using Makeup Geek Foiled Eyeshadow in the shade Grand Stand. This is my favorite foiled eyeshadow by Makeup Geek. It's actually the only one that I completely used up and had to purchase a second one because I love it that much. It doesn't matter if I have a spray tan or if I'm fair as can be. I love it just as much any day of the week. 
week. So I'm going to pack that on the entire inner corner of the lid, but I'm not going to take it all the way across the whole lid. I don't want to cover up what we did with fudge and the beautiful browns that we have on. So just the inner corner, I want that to have a pop. And I'm just going over the edge of it with a little bit of fudge on my brush just to make sure that everything blends together because we don't want it to be like, boom, grandstand, boom, fudge. We want it to be a nice like ombre effect as it fades into the other colors. Now I'm going to go in and create my wing. And honey, I'm going to create a wing so sharp and so harsh and so elongated that if I want to take flight and fly away from all the bullshit, I just might. And if I need to use it as a weapon, I can also have that option as well. I am using the Maybelline Gel Liner in Blackest Black. This is my favorite gel liner. I have used so many of them and I swear to God, Maybelline still makes the best gel liner in my opinion. If you guys have one that you think is better, please, because I'm always looking for an upgrade, but honestly, like this gel liner is everything to me. So I've done my liner the same way for a very, very long time. I create a line from the corner of my eye up towards the tail of my brow and then I just kind of like fill in the blank. Like I create the wing and then I fill it in. And after I put on some lashes, I am going to go back and make my wing even a little bit more intense because I realize mm, I could do better. So with a quick coat of mascara, I'm going to go in with Velour Lashes. And these are in the style Lash in the City. They're like those really pretty fluffy lashes that kind of have a wing on the outer corner. So they give you more of like a cat eye effect. And I think that they are so beautiful with winged liner. Like if you just put on wing liner with no shadow whatsoever in these lashes, you're going to immediately have a cat eye because they're just such beautiful cat eye lashes, which is why I love them for like a fierce nighttime or girls night out look. They're just so gorgeous. One of my favorites. I'm just making sure that I have my liner black as can be. So I'm going over the line. Make sure after you go over your line of lashes, do not look upward towards the ceiling. Otherwise, your liner will transfer onto your lid and then you won't be able to clean that up and that's not cute. I, I, I have breakdowns about those types of things, okay guys? It's very scary. So <laughs> I'm going to prime my face using the Makeup Forever Radiant Primer. I forgot how much I love this because I've been using the Becca Luminous Primer so much recently. It's been months since I've used this one and I really, really love it again. I'm going to be using the Josie Maron Vibrancy Foundation, but I am going to have to mix it because I am so fair right now. So I'm using some Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Foundation. I'm talking way too fast. I'm sorry. <sighs> Mama needs to calm down. Okay. I'm mixing a little bit of a lighter foundation just for the simple fact that I was way too white for my foundation. So I had to lighten it up a little bit and I'm applying that with a Morphe M439 foundation brush. This is my favorite foundation brush for a very, very long time. And then I'm going to do my under eye concealer. And I only had two shades. I had one that was too light and I had one that was too dark. So I'm mixing two different shades as you can see. And this is the Urban Decay Naked Weightless Concealer. My favorite concealer ever, I believe. But again, if you guys have any, re any recommendations for concealers that are amazing that you can't live without, please give me your recommendations because concealers are one of those things that I feel like there's only like two or three concealers that I've ever tried that I actually love. And I'm always looking for new concealers. Always, always, always. And I am using a damp beauty blender, by the way, to just blend all of this out. And the reason I put the light concealer in the center of the forehead and the center of the face is just to even everything out so that it looks more natural, if you will. You know, because this is just super natural, you guys. I'm using the RCMA No Color Powder, which is a translucent powder and a damp beauty blender under my eye to set the under eye area. This has been my favorite way to set my under eye recently. It just looks so seamless and it's very, very matte. So what I'm going to do is pick up a little bit of the MAC Pro Emphasize Powder, which is kind of like a highlight powder, but it's not shimmery. It's like a satin. It's not a full matte, but it's not a shimmer. It looks really, really beautiful. And I'm going to use that on the under eye area. And I'm applying that with a M438 brush. Many different brands have brushes very similar to this, but this one is by Morphe. And I'm actually using that highlight powder kind of all over my face because of the fact that I am so fair right now. I'm using it on my chin. I'm kind of bringing it down above my upper lip. I'm putting it on my forehead. I'm kind of just putting it everywhere because as you can see, I'm very white right now for me. For me. I know that there's people that are way, way, way more light than me, but this is like the lightest that I can possibly get. So I'm going to fill in my brows using the Anastasia Brow Definer, which has been the only way that I've done my brows ever since the Brow Definer came out. It's my favorite way to do my brows. Honestly, my brows used to be a struggle. Now it's the easiest thing I do. It takes me like literally three minutes tops maybe. It's such a fast process now because I've got like my entire routine like down packed with this brow definer. I love it so much. I brush my brows down. I fill it on top. I brush them in. I fill them in on bottom. Boom. Shakalaka. Good to go. 
I'm going to be using the Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer. God, this stuff smells so good. And I'm going to be applying it with a big old Tom Ford brush. This brush is so expensive. I've talked about it before, but honestly, there's nothing like it. It's kind of frustrating because I'm like, why? Why do you have to be so expensive and so beautiful all at the same time, right? But I'm going to apply that bronzer all over the outer portion of my face, all around my cheekbones, my jawline, all up my temples, my hairline, my forehead. And then I'm going to do just a little bit of cleaning up. And I'm going to take that same RCMA No Color Translucent Powder. And I'm going to just create a sharp line from the corner of my ear down to the corner of my lip so that we can just bake that a little bit so my contour won't get messy throughout the day and it'll look a little bit more cleaned up. If you want an in-depth tutorial on baking, I do have one that I uploaded last month. You can check that out on my channel. And then I'm going to take a little bit more of burnt orange. I'm using the same shadows I use on my upper lid and now on my lower lid. Take any pencil brush. This is an E3, I believe, from the Morphe Elite Collection. And I'm going to just blend that on the entire lower lash line. I'm taking it all the way to the inner corner, all the way to the outer corner. And then I'm going to pick up Fudge by Anastasia again. And I am using like a small precision brush to apply fudge to my lower lash line. This one is by Sigma. Uh, I don't know the exact number of it, but it is on their website. This one is from the Extravaganza collection, which is why it's like a goldish rose gold on the ferrule and not just the regular silver. But I'm going to take fudge and I'm going to press it into the lash line all the way into the inner tear duct, all the way and connect it to the outer corner to my wing liner so that it's completely rounded out and very defined. And then I'll just go back in with any pencil brush and just blend that out so we have no harsh lines. Now this is the part of the tutorial that really makes the eye makeup look. This is the most important part if you ask me. I'm going to be taking the exact same Maybelline gel liner that I used to create my wing and I'm going to put it on my entire waterline including my tear duct on the inner corner. This is what's going to give you that like really fierce almond eye effect. It's going to kind of create a cat eye without being too catty. You know what I'm saying? Because we're not going to actually draw on the skin but we're getting it all the way to the inner tear duct and it's just really going to bring attention to the eyes. It'll make your eye color stand out. It'll make your eyes look a little bit more slanted. It's just a really beautiful technique and I've been doing it so much recently and every single time I do this, I get so many compliments on my eyes and I swear it's because of this technique right here, bringing it all the way into the inner corner on the top and the bottom and really making sure that entire area is black. Now I'm going to grab any black shadow you have, doesn't matter, and I'm going to go in, oh, cute face, Jacqueline. That is really, really attractive, honey. Anyways, I'm going to grab that same brush and just pack on some black shadow right over top of all of that and blend it out so that everything stays in place and nothing is going to fall and smudge, and again, so everything looks nice and blended. And then I'm just going to put some mascara on my lower lashes. I am using the MAC Extended Play Lash, one of my favorite mascaras for lower lashes. And then I'm going to pick up the Champagne Collection Face Palette. Yay! And I'm going to be using Amaretto as my blush. Don't ask. I couldn't find my blush brush anywhere, so I just used this random brush that's like for under eye powder, and I just decided to use that because you got to make it work, right? So I made it work. So I'm just going to pack Amaretto, I'm sorry, Amaretto on my entire cheek area back towards the temples, and then I'm going to highlight. I am using Champagne Pop right on the apples of my cheeks, and I'm applying this with a Morphe 510 brush. And then once I get back to the high points of the cheekbones, I'm going to put on some Prosecco Pop, as you see me doing right now. This is the way I've been highlighting for a very long time because I just love the ombre effect of the gold on my cheekbones and the more champagne color on the center of my cheeks. I know a lot of people don't like applying highlight to the center of their cheeks, the apples of their cheeks, but I personally love it. So I encourage you to do you. I'm doing me, boo. So I am just going to take a little bit more of the Jeffree Star Ice Cold and just put that right over top of champagne popped. That way I just have like a very bing highlight because you know me, I like sending signals to space. It's what I do. I'm going to go in with Anastasia liquid lip in the shade naked i was trying to think i was like what color is this i'm going to apply that all over my lips and then once that's dry i'm going to apply mark jacobs moon glow over top of it which is a very very pale gloss but i love the nude lip that it gives me it's like not too nude not too pink, not too brown. It's like my perfect, perfect glossy nude lip. So yeah, that completes the look, you guys. I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. I love you and I'll see you soon. Bye, guys. 